pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for coming to our March regular meeting. Familiar faces serving our union leadership from the various union staff, teachers, community members. Okay, is there any public comment? Okay. Consent agenda. We have a motion to approve it. So is there a second? Okay. So is there any discussion or any questions about it? Okay, all those in favor, please put your hand up saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, motion carried unanimously. Reading and review of correspondence, you see? No. I don't have any either. Okay, superintendent's report. Great. Uh, I can't go off to Park Lane in a moment for their presentation, but it is uh, Board Member Appreciation Month, and uh, our students wanted to recognize the hard work that you do, and you'll see a, a packet of note cards uh, depicting our students' hard work uh, across the district. So, uh, you know, we appreciate all the time you put in. They're beautiful. Yeah, they're pretty, really impressive. Uh, we have a presentation today from Clark Lane. Uh, they're going to share with us uh, two different updates, one on their work in math this year, as well as an update on their prospering electives program. Uh, we heard from them about a year and a half ago uh, on their pilot of their uh, electives program, and we are here to hear them uh, present on both math and electives. I'll hand it off to Principal Jim Sachs and Assistant Principal Tracy Good evening, everybody.
Um, they dug right in and they identified weakness areas and um, we worked with them to come up with some solutions. So TLC was a great deal so on Thursdays. Um, our all our teachers meet the various disciplines and Tracy and I went and worked with the TLCs along with our joiner and we analyzed results and people shared them out and talked about um, weaknesses and um, then that's when Heather introduced the um, interim assessments which Tracy's going to talk about in a minute. And that really helped teachers understand and start to talk the language of the SBA. Was this just the math teachers or all teachers? Um, well, we concentrated on the math PLC for the interim assessment, but they were also taken for LS as well. No, I mean, were all teachers uh, first in um, math aspects that needed? Um, yeah, so we, we shared all the information in October with the faculty meeting. We updated them around January because we presented the math stars program that we're going to share in a little bit. So, you know, the faculty was aware of what was happening in our concerns, and the math teachers were just phenomenal about being able to open their eyes about that. But I mean, then, then the English teachers and the social studies teachers and all those other teachers can incorporate, and science teachers especially can incorporate those yeah. math aspects. Science mostly did. Um, we didn't have, you know, we didn't invite any other two LCs. We didn't want to do so much for the fact that we people, but I understand. Uh, I think the most more reinforcement they get in every discipline okay. really helps. Okay. And if they're seeing it over and over again in different yeah. ways. We definitely see science. The science is really, um, you know, in labs and on a lot of performance mm -hmm. tests that you want to see a lot of them. So the, the other disciplines were not first? Not as <coughs> They understood what we were doing, but they weren't specifically in the lab things to work on. So um, Heather Joyner really led um, the math teachers in particular to look at the, um, the smarter math teachers. So when those kids came out, they weren't as easy as they are now. You see last year and this year, um, many more interim assessments were added. The quality of them, the freshman banks and all of that was, has all been enhanced. So um, teachers worked over several facilities to really go into that website, look at the questions, look at how it's structured, and most importantly, look at the information that they can garner from it. So the the smart balance results that we get in the summer or fall are, are broad. This lets us get down to individual kids and individual items. So the, the information that they get back is really much more useful. Um, and they saw that firsthand and they kind of walked through um, interim assessment class together, decided which ones they were going to do um, with all of their students. We kind of agreed collectively that every student will have three experiences with math. Um, ELA was doing their own thing, but three experiences with math with an interim assessment before the test date at this point. Um, most have done at least two, um, and we have a couple moments before it's over. Yeah, if these kids have done the second one already, have, have you tracked to see whether they have improved? So the, the way that they're structured is they focus on each of the different um, standards within the common course. So they've been doing different topics. They wouldn't be able to necessarily yeah, track yeah. growth. So uh, one might be on numbers right. and operations, and another one might be more on expressions and equations or geometry. So, and the other thing with tracking data, so we didn't necessarily intend for it to be um, data about where the kid, we wanted to be instructional, so that was what the kids <coughs> came away from. So, we gave teachers the freedom to, when they were giving this, to kind of stop. We said, I've seen teachers do this. So everybody's got the same test. It's not computer adapted. It's adapted like smart balance. So I saw one teacher say, all right, I need everyone to stop when they get to question number four. And they talked about it. Um, and then we got, so in that sense, the data wouldn't tell you whether or not the teacher understood that um, or not. And then I've also seen them do them whole class above grade level or below grade level. So they were really yeah. using the math as a teaching tool rather than as a the test tool. The math, the math, the intro. Yeah. And that's exactly what the State Department is encouraging school districts to do. Okay. There is a long version of the test because SPAC is multi-state. The State Department has, has encouraged districts not to do that long test but to do these shorter modules because they really want to use it as a tool, as a teaching tool. Um, which is exactly how Clarkland is using it. Uh, your point would be a good one, Marcia, if, if there were similar questions to analyze it, but it's really on different units, and so teachers are really embracing that and also seeing how the kids are able to think and use the material on the computer, which is sometimes you know, a foreign type of concept.
I, I think it's good that, like, for instance, you said geometry, so the, the math teacher was concentrating just on geometry. Right, they so they could get each each area of the test, and they could concentrate on that area and really get proficient at it. Right. Without yeah. having their mind you have to go all over the place. Mm -hmm. with the so, from the first second into the second, mm -hmm. I the Whichever item you wanted to as a whole class, and then you know create your own or 
So how do, so are they doing that? So do we know when mastery is, is achieved? Yeah, so the mastery is measured maybe not through that interest, but it's part of the unit. So they might have just finished the expressions and equations unit, and then they do the interim assessment. They find more areas that they want to focus on. They do that instructional. They may go back and use interim assessment to um, measure again, or they may do it another with another. And what percent of the class has to have mastered before they go on with the concept? So in that sense, it's, it's you know, more of a formative snapshot right. than yeah. it's what you need. So you think parameters of the new passing the units move on. So what's really interesting about this is you know it's very accessible for teachers to find out exactly who is faltering in the class and that's the result or intervention or right. any practice. So that is a really kind of a powerful thing mm -hmm. all this data, you know, this graphic data program. And is that available? That's totally available. Look at any kids. No, no, no. I mean, the extra help from the teacher. The extra help is available, and we're talking about the math program. Okay. Um, so we talked about the informative whole class and the the format, um, and we talked about grouping kids with like needs to get them the extra help, and then it's of course it's better. The teachers are learning more about what those questions look like and what closure they have. So, now, when you give the SAT, uh, CA, excuse me, um, it's given across the curriculum. I mean, not all math teachers are giving the math, correct? Correct. So it's really important that all the teachers know about this stuff. But they, they can't help administer, they can't help give any right. They can only process. They yeah. process, but it's, it's okay. scripted. It's just like the CMTs when okay. a whole teacher would give, you know, the math CMT. So okay. they, they are there to make sure that the kids so we have really um, specific training for proctoring, but they know how to help them. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mentioned earlier we have multiple data points. So what's really nice now is that we have this math scoring um, assessment that happens three times a year. There's a really close correlation between math and SBA, and we combine that with previous performance data. And you'll see how that um, leads into uh, identifying things like the student for math stars. But also, this the math program uh, really helps us in something called staff for students with the team, and it really helps us hone in on, on interventions for students, getting with more specialist students. But having all that math data now and having it over time is really helpful because we can see students are really responding well to these interventions or are not responding well, getting more interventions or pull back in. So, math has helped us much as probably as good questions. Should we at some point have a report on the number of students that are still not doing well or the ones that are doing well? Is that a possibility? Yeah, so we can figure out some, some math, um, yeah, the math general math data that you're absolutely And if this is generally informing your tier one instruction? Yeah, so the math is really used as that universal screen, uh, and then so uh, that's exactly correct. So, if students are underperforming in the math assessment, which is for math and language arts, and we administer three times a year, then um, it would trigger tier one intervention, and then if the tier one intervention, which is a classroom intervention, is not being successful, then the classroom teacher would refer the child to the SAT team to see are there any other tools which they could be doing with the students for our are further interventions needed, and that's when our, in, our math for language arts intervention is it may pick up the child for a set amount of time for a set focus area to see if that extra remediation can, um, you know, close the gap uh, in the child's uh, deficit area. Explain tier one again. So tier uh, one is for the individual or for the class? Yeah. So tier, tier one, uh, the the way. Um, the SRBI, the RTI response to intervention goes is tier one of the classroom intervention, so it's really differentiated instruction. So I think it gets to the genesis of a lot of the questions you're asking, Marcia, which is, so if the child doesn't get into class, what do you do? And, and there's a certain amount, as we all know, of differentiation that a classroom right. teacher can employ um, while teaching the whole class, but then at a, there is a point where there's just not enough classroom teacher time, and further intervention is needed. And that's when we go into Tier 2 and Tier 3 before we do any consideration for special ed needs. Okay. Um, so, 
map is also pretty flexible. I think it's a small screen map or a larger cap. So you can get the LC right into it. So the map is a real great tool. You should concentrate on it. Um, and so, you know, just that yeah, we use it to inform a lot of decisions. Um, also, the features created performance packs. Uh, it's easy to use release items, so they created them from scratch. And so what they did was they created these performance caps in the classroom and then assisted them when they faltered and didn't do well with them. And they're going to see that on the SBA. Uh, just wanted to go over some things on the bottom here. So a lot of teachers are experimenting in search types of technology, things like in photo, in box, kind of atom, those math, those are technology based interventions and programs, and then there's a few non technology like math science. So those just additional ways to engage students or put the classroom a little better because some different overnight options to be studying and so on. So are those free? Yeah. Um, Many of them are. There's, there's a few programs free. that uh, we do yeah. pay for yeah. and use with our uh, students in tier two, tier three or special ed. Two we pay for it. We've um, also spent some time this fall just thinking about and reaching out to other counties in particular. Um, in particular, um, I had a phone conference with um, our neighbors in East Line. Just to try to pick their brains a little bit. They did pretty well. They did pretty well on these tests to see what we might be doing differently. We've talked about extending um, our math code to a couple of teachers to visit and see their, you know, not only what the materials are, but how they're delivering instruction and take away from that. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I believe they do about the same thing. Yeah. 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 But they're a teaching tool. They are a teaching tool. You don't want to open it, but you don't want to move it. So, yeah. it's It coincides with the curriculum though, for the year, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then we, in, you know, we're looking at it. Um, other professional development that our teachers and that group have done, we have done um, they went to NCPM this year, our grade seven teachers went to contact with the Association of Teachers in Math in Connecticut. Um, and then um, another one they did was go to Mindset and Thrift, because math is all about perseverance. And so, you know, what we see often is kids who give up um, before they've given a problem a real chance. So um, that was something. All the teaching that they do, they um, bring back to their field and share with their colleagues. I have a question. Why, why did you pick that particular book? So that was one that um, I believe I had read it, but Craig had found it and recommended it to all of us. And we read it as a whole uh, administrative team last year, and then we brought it back and had all of our math. So when you, whenever you're saying all teachers, you're only talking math. 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 But all math coaches throughout the district have, have read that book. Uh, and the ad team did that book discussion last year, uh, and it was a uh, highly recommended one by the National Math Council, NCPM. So that, that's why we brought that into our district. We had a lot of focus on you as a region. So also we did some work uh, between special and general education, and so we brought back to the Boston teaching model uh, this past September. And we're also aligned uh, much more carefully what's happening in general in the classroom and what's happening in the skills classrooms. Um, we've done more work on keeping those teams here as well as we can so that uh, the student going into a skills class knows exactly or takes with him or her the work that's happening in the general classroom. It used to be a little less clear, so we really tune that up. Um, as far as AIM, so AIM is our present intervention program, and that is our tutor um, who's running that program. You know, in the budget for next year, we have requested certified teachers or so we'll get passed through, and then um, we will then look at the different type of curriculum and we go to support that. We really feel so many that we have to be What is the name of the national? 
Aims is the math support and then reach is the language arts support and our teachers at Clark Lane really branded it so that it's, it doesn't look like, uh, again, those remedial level classes for kids. It's sort of this um, jazzier title. And you requested those additional uh, funds already? They're in the budget, yeah. Okay, so then we had an opportunity to um, develop an after school program that we call Math Stars. Um, so our goal there was to look at kids who possibly weren't in an intervention currently, um, but who also did not achieve goals on um, the smart analysis assessment. So those kind of middle of the road kids that with a little boost might um, perform better come April or May. So we sat down with our math department, looked at all the data we had, identified kids, and um, invited whole bunches of kids to come. Those are the um, kids that have that have been Yeah. Um, if, uh, we were asking for a two-day-a-week commitment um, from kids after school to do math. So I think in time... <laughs> in time You're feeding them, though. <laughs> 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 Um, but some people very enthusiastic. I mean, within minutes of sending out the invite, we had some people jumping right on board, and you know, a couple others with some um, frequent requests. You know, so this will be really good for you. Um, these are the numbers of kids who are attending in each grade. Um, so, and didn't you just say 90? 90 in my grade. You invited them. Yeah. You got 34. Yeah. Out of 600. Right, so we wanted to keep the group relatively small, so we knew that we had to invite probably 30 to 40, 30 to 40 to get each grade to get. Yeah, but you've got 60% of your population that is below. Uh, no, we, we're you have to, this is target, you have to understand all the stuff that's going on in the classroom during the school day. This was a it's subset, 90 school. were targeted for after school, which is about 20% of, of the school. We obviously would have liked to see more response, but it's not hard to force kids to come out to school. Does the invitation also go to the parents? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's how they do it like that. Really? Yes. Yeah. There are a lot of conversations yeah. with parents. Wow. Yeah. There's yeah. sports, there's yeah. clubs, and other I have talked to parents, and there has been positive feedback. So right. it's, I know, the kids who are doing it parents are going to. So, you know, for the first year, we'll take it. We'll get a little bit more time. Yeah, I do. <laughs> So, and a yep. longer time period too, because we, you know, we we started in January, because mm -hmm. you know, we could start at the beginning of the year and do sessions, where it can say I'll do it for this period of time, and then I'll do clubs or whatever. What's the cost of the program? Right now? So the cost would be the after school, I don't know the after school, but we're paying for teachers. After no cost to the family. No, no, no. The cost of the teacher yeah. for the one hour yeah. after school. So there's after in the school teachers work. contract, there's yeah. a contract rate for after school work. And we're paying that one hour contract. So, approximately, a couple hundred bucks. I mean, it's, it's really not. A couple hundred bucks is all we're spending. So because, because it's like $30 an hour, and you're doing it twice a week, so it's only two hours, and you're doing it for how many weeks? I mean, it's like you're getting food, and you're getting material. Yeah, you're getting yeah. yeah. material. Yeah. Yeah. The food you already have. Jim's baking nightly. <laughs> 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 so really, for a couple hundred, that's all it's costing, really? It's yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. You can get you the exact number, but I... Uh, no, I was thinking more like $10,000. No, 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 like no, no, Okay, all right. Okay. I mean, we adjusted up. We have more. Right. more. Like I said, we budgeted for this for next year. What did we budget last for next year? I think we budgeted like 7000 but that would be for the whole, whole school year, year right. with the envisionment right. instead of um, one trimester. Right. Mm -hmm. So these are some quotes. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to speak to some teachers, about halfway through Mass Stars, and um, two that really stuck out were one of the teachers saying that they were carrying the language of the Mass Stars program in the general education classroom, which is really exciting. So kids are taking what they were learning after school, and they were applying it during the day, which is really exciting. And one of the students, uh, the second to the bottom, who 
was really troubled by me and he said that he was so stressed before, not looking forward to math class, thinking about the test for a whole week, and now he's way less stressed about math. And that's really a great thing to do because we don't want to create all the anxiety, right. lack of knowledge, so that was great too. It's a very good job, you know, responses to the program. And of course we hope to build it. So we'll be having a future. Um, obviously we're going to um, continue with our math assessment that happens in the spring. Um, we are reviewing students for a summer academy program, so I'm going to be working with Mr. Discordia. We do something like math class in the summer, and that'll also be invitation, so that might be a harder step. So that program could be small this summer and build. Um, we're looking at materials, but we still need to sort of wait a little bit on the budget for that. Um, we are going to revisit the role of intervention, especially if we can serve like teachers. And obviously, when we get the SBA results, um, we're going to be very excited to, I think we're going to see some great growth. I mean, just the fact that the students are really super familiar with the test and the format might in itself, but the teachers are as well, and teaching is passing it. <coughs> so we feel very confident in the results. So uh, generally, the, um, the results don't come out until November. No, a little earlier. Yeah, um, a little late August, August, December. Oh, it's okay. varied kind of year to year. Yeah, really. It, it's possible because we see some of the math growth, math growth. Sure. Before we'll the get that to you. We're looking at just that to get that to you soon. Hopefully this will. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, and, and forgive me, have you already reached out to East Lyme and Madison? Um, have they said, and I don't know how much you've delved into it already, but are they seeing any correlation with the kids coming up from the elementary and maybe trying to bridge the gap in the foundational skills between leaving elementary school, so to speak, and because it's the whole process, obviously, it's not you arrive in sixth grade and, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's the whole it might be nice to bridge that gap with the fifth grade teachers. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. Probably adding a whole other layer to it, but um, maybe see if East Lyme and Madison have some sort of, I don't know, collaboration thing that they do or a, P, you know, a PD or I don't know. East Lyme is 5, 6, 7, and 8, right? In the middle And see if that might... That's huge. Yeah, and that's why I was wondering. Yeah, that's why I was wondering if there's a, if they have a direct correlation going on there because of that. Um, I know Old Paper's the same kind of thing. It's a three to eight model, so it's a slightly different model than what we do. There might be a way to look at that. Do you think, I, you know, we can get, I don't know if the, are the other board members are interested, but can we get some uh, examples of the math test? We can certainly. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm there, right? Yeah. I'm curious to see where it's like. You can even go online. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 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 We won't make you do them here. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm right. Name on it. Could be a take home. <laughs> Some superintendents have done that when they're very Yeah. Tracy, right on the like airway. Yeah. 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 Can I add something really quickly here? Uh, now, if you have a, if there's a student who is already sort of performing at a super high level, you know, because we have, we had talked about the struggling students. Um, that's the, the other piece. We sometimes, you know, don't think about the, uh, or if they're already in that class where they're way of, and then the teacher's going over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So I walked into um, that class where we were taking into the and the students were dropped in by the staring at the screen all the time. So she put up some very difficult problems. Okay. You can use it for really challenging. Right. And I think you have an online resources such as Khan Academy. Yeah. Elective update? Great. So um, we have an expectation regarding our electives, which is expanded a great deal in the year. And um, we did this for a number of reasons. Um, to offer students more experience in the school level. 
some of those are under so I think that's the next one. Yeah, so let me just say, uh, one of the you know, really strong visual uh, representations of this was when I was at the concert in January and Jill Winter started and said, this is the biggest orchestra I've ever had. It was really exciting. I got to hear this. So, you know, we kind of marked it into picking up the instruments and singing. Give it a try. All of them. Really, really good. Yeah. So, um, right your, your question. Um, to be answered on this slide. So the, the um, elected steps aren't just part split up into three pieces for uh, the music courses in sixth grade. They're all in lieu of duty type courses. So what we do is just to, we offer the teachers um, opportunities to keep them elective. We keep the class size as much as well, and they don't have a duty. And that is following the model that's been established at the high school for many years. So what about the study halls. It sounds to me like study halls are now teaching standards. How did, how, how did that take place? Yeah, so what happens is, as the number of electives go up, the number of teachers available for study halls go down, but the kids needing those study halls go down as well. So we have less and less kids needing study halls because now they're in the No, but it sounds like you've got another teaching class situation. Well, they are not doing the duty. The duty could have been for it been something like watching a path or doing a study hall. So now they're not doing that. Something it's well and it's voluntary. It's voluntary. It's voluntary. It's voluntary. It's voluntary. And the and the study halls aren't impacted with a larger size. They're they're staying remaining small as well. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be commended then because the teacher study hall is a lot harder than just sitting in the study hall. So thank you, teachers. Yeah. 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 They still have their their contractual plans and period in the day. So even when they do to do it in the duty elective, they still have their plans. So who's picking up all the duties? The teachers who, it's the same. So the teachers who are not doing elective still do study halls, and but the number has been relatively the same because you haven't run out of teachers. No, we haven't. Run out. <laughs> 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 it's a doubling act. I've had to move around. They, it's they it's have interesting. They just covered the scheduling to be one day, and that's enough. Yeah. 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 I'm good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you, who told me, Mr. Chubb told me that you were really excited last year as a lawyer about your daughter taking the three years class. So, there you go. Yeah. There you go. I, my, my twins love it. One's in science explorers and culinary. I don't cook anymore. I'm not kidding. I mean, they, it, yeah. I mean, I'm not, and it, but it makes me feel safe because they're learning how to cook and I don't have to hover over them. It's, it's so valuable and my other twin, I mean, science explorers loves it. Love that. Yeah, they're going to do washing clothes. I'm hoping. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Ever. But thanks for the thought. So we're definitely planning to, to kind of keep going with this. We're going to survey the kids. We surveyed them each trimester. So at the end of the trimester, we will do so again. We'll keep some parent input about um, already. We have some ideas about where we need to teach and what we want to expand. Culinary is one that we're going to look at for next year because now there are seventh graders who have that opportunity that they've never had before. We need to look at what we're offering in eighth grade so it's not a repeat. So he's already um, starting to think about what that will look like. Um, and we want to get other teachers in to see um, what their colleagues are doing. And then, of course, looking at what our high school is offering to see if there's anything else that we could mm -hmm. be offering kind of for interest or something into their right. um, program. So our three years are going to be in the CAD. I was just going to say the same thing. The CAD can lead right into the CAD. And, uh, yeah. Right. Some nice tie ins possible with the college and career path mm -hmm. with the electives. So we're excited about it. We hope that it can, you know, each elective is a conversation with a teacher, ask him what the passion is, and then try to then they really think about it. Mm -hmm. We're excited about it. Where are you able to do the this, um, culinary in the cafeteria? You no, know, we have a culinary group. So we look at kind of culinary um, as part of the unified yeah. entry. It was a required part of the E3 yeah. program for many years, but we made it um, kind of an option for seven and eighth grade. So again, that's not adding any staff. We just kind of need to figure what to do. It's a tainted culinary. And you want to take it as part of the entry. So now they don't have to. They can do Thank you. Thank you. You know, from a district perspective, it's important to market this to the greatest community. Mm -hmm. There's some strong STEM components in those electives, mm -hmm. making sure our families through our district connection newsletter knows what we're offering because it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting. Thank you again. Uh, Many of you commented on the artwork both in the room and out in the hall this month. This Waterford High, uh, it's really tremendous if we get the opportunity uh, to walk around. So we thank them uh, for that. Uh, I've mentioned throughout the course of the year uh, our, about our Teacher Leadership Academy. Uh, our fifth and final session is next week where they'll be presenting uh, their leadership projects. We plan to have some teachers here at the April meeting. Uh, to talk about their experiences in that program this year. It's uh, uh, been very positive, uh, positively received by teachers. I'm probably going to put this under correspondence. Um, Pat and Andre, good luck at rehearsal. Uh, they're involved in the <laughs> dancing. <laughs> 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 okay. uh, we received word from MEASC, that's the association that accredits high schools in New England as well as colleges and universities and our accreditation has been postponed by a year so it will now be 2020 instead of 2019 so uh, it buys us a little more time um, as you know that's a heavy lift that's a very intensive uh, process uh, as we did last uh, spring we did again uh, this spring we issued a magnet survey to families who send their children uh, to magnet schools to get a feel uh, for why uh, they made that choice. Uh, this year's results are consistent with last year's results with the two biggest factors being the opportunity to send their child to a theme school and uh, the elements of diversity that the magnet schools will, uh, offer. Uh, we issued that survey to 99 families last year, 43 new families uh, this spring with uh, only 10 of the 43 responding. So it wasn't as high as we would have liked to see. Uh, we will certainly uh, do that again uh, next year, but wanted to okay. share those results with you. Uh, does anyone uh, contact anyone by phone? Just to kind of... I know you've mentioned that. We, we I don't know. haven't to date. It's just a matter of 
how to do that and who does it, but sure. it is on my team. Sorry, I was in advertising oh. for 10 years before I was in this, and I, it's, it's, no, if you can't reach them like this, then I don't know, I'm just thinking it's a personal touch to exactly. maybe just call and really get a, get a good feel for, I don't know. Absolutely. March 31st, uh, we'll have the Chamber of Commerce State of Waterford Breakfast. It was supposed to be March 10th, but we were snowed out. Uh, <laughs> so March 31st, I look forward to speaking at that with the, uh, the first selectmen. Uh, as I mentioned, Andre and Pat heading off to the ballroom battle rehearsal. Uh, many of our staff are involved in that tomorrow night, so we look forward to, uh, to a great evening. That concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Down to the committee and other reports. Anyone have a committee report? No. <laughs> okay. Tom had mentioned tomorrow's um, Dancing with the Stars, the battle between East Lyme and Waterford, and it's seven o'clock at Waterford High School. So I hope you can attend. Um, they're splitting the proceeds, and the proceeds will go to our Waterford Youth Service Bureau is going to be used for uh, counseling for our students. Okay, uh, new business. Review and possible action regarding EDO 99, the Addendum Healthy Food Certification. That was imposed on our packet for 2016 17. Any annual requirement around child nutrition standards? We have a motion to um, accept it. Marcia? Is there a second? 17 18. Yeah, the motion. Oh, yeah. 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 It's okay. the motion is for so it is for 17 18. Okay. I'll second, Jody. Okay. Any discussion or any questions? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Carried unanimously. Did you impossible action regarding Waterford High School civics and American government curriculum and that was in case in that packet? And so um, as you can see by the cover letter, uh, we've uh, revised this or initiated the revision a little out of cycle based upon uh, primarily initially student feedback kind of wanting to know more mm -hmm. about the whole government process. And so um, we when we heard that, and the we would be the high school administration, uh, then then I began the conversation with them about, well, let's look at our curriculum and do a revision. And so the two teachers that are teaching the civics class, the department head, and the high school administration collaboratively uh, worked on this uh, revision. The revision really uh, centers around the Medicaid uh, studies framework and um, you can see the areas which we cover in the civics class. Um, <clears throat> when we did this initial adoption a few years ago, the civics, uh, the social studies department didn't want a textbook per se, but um, after doing this a little organically, there was just a very quick feeling that, you know, that type of reinforcement, because it's a requirement for all students, it will hit the mark with a lot of students, so, we have behind Craig um, uh, Merriman uh, at the uh, computer station uh, left the book, and it's uh, Government Alive, Power, Politics, and You. Um, not asking for improvement of the textbook uh, tonight, but uh, we did follow policy 6161, which is the instructional materials, materials adoption policy, and did a whole textbook review and that's on the inside cover, and you can kind of see the research of what other instructional materials we looked at. This is really uh, the industry standard, if you will, uh, book out there, and I, I do think it will really bring alive uh, the whole you know, uh, civics and government and uh, be really better understandable for all of our students at the high school. So uh, with that, if there are any questions on the curriculum tonight, uh, myself and or Allison may be able to help you uh, with that. Uh, just have a comment. I was really impressed with the work that was And it, what I like about it is it addresses what's going on today. And I think that's what the students are, you know, and I'm happy that they asked for it, too. That's, that's very good. 
Okay, if there aren't any questions or comments, um, the form would like to make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education approve the Civics and American Government curriculum for grades 9 through 12 as presented. Lisa? Is there a second? Ann? Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please put this on the same line. Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The motion is carried unanimous. In an initial notification, textbook adoption is for the. We don't have to, right. It's there if any board member wants to take the board for review during the next month. Okay. Okay, um, item D, discussion regarding the 2017 18 education budget. Obviously, board of finance meeting last night passed unanimously. It's great to see active community involved in the process. Uh, final action is Monday night, uh, this coming Monday night to the 27th, uh, you know, for final approval to send it to uh, the RTM. Uh, we present to the RTM on uh, May 3rd, I believe. I verify that date. And those of you in the audience that came to the meeting last night, thank you. Okay. Um, Item E, review and possible action regarding non-renewal of long-term substitute teaching. It's an annual thing we do in accordance with state statute. These are long-term subs who were notified up front it was short-term employment. So this is, uh, you know, budget, limited um, type positions. Yeah, yeah. sure, you don't mind. Um, I make a motion that the Waterford Board of Education moves that the contracts of employment of Rebecca Boyce, Brian Judd, Melinda Georges, Jennifer Trousdale, and Ashley Rowe not be renewed for the following year upon their expiration at the end of the 2017-18 school year, and that the superintendent of schools is directed to advise, advise such persons in writing of this action. Is there a second? Yes. Motion? Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please sit in front of saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, now we're down to item F, first reading of policies. Craig, do you want to just take over? Sure. And so, uh, you know, we have nine policies tonight. Uh, uh, the policy subcommittee looks at not only the legislatively required ones, but we do look at other sections of the policy annual. And uh, the first three I'm going to be talking about tonight, we're recommending for deletion. And so the first one, which is uh, policy four zeros is um, the mission belief statement and the, the rationale is since we're reviewing our strategic planning, uh, we'd rather get out the uh, old versions and then it will be up to the board. It's not required to incorporate these in a policy manual because statements like strategic planning can stand up on themselves just like board goals as I will talk about later. So. Um, because you're deleting a policy, uh, the board has every right to um, make the motion with one meeting. So uh, if you want and to cluster the first three, we could, uh, unless you want me to go one by one, uh, Joey. I'm okay with clustering. Okay. Okay. So I, then I just have one quick question about um, the mission statement, or the lead statement. Does these staff look for things like this though when they come and visit? Um, that is uh, in, in our existence. And so if we have a strategic plan, then NEAS would be fine with that alone. It is not required to be put in the policy. Okay, because I remember years ago when they came. Yes. I remember at Watson High School, Don had a, a big like, banner on the wall of right. a mission statement. So uh, the, the thought around that is that the mission should be known by the community mm -hmm. and you know, I would imagine at the end of our strategic planning we would want to get the strategic plan out and known and um, if we want to then re-engage in some signage for the schools, we certainly mm -hmm. could. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if that's necessary, but I just remember we staff looking at that when they were here. Mm -hmm. So the next one is recommended for deletion would be the goals of the Waterford Board of Education. And because uh, the Waterford uh, Board now sets Board of Ed goals, right, again, we don't see it really needed to have a policy on rather dated goals. 
And then the third policy, the goals and objectives for student achievement, as you can see in that policy, really is a, a, a little outdated uh, too. And uh, because we really organically drive that through line from the Board of Ed to the superintendent to the school goals and have that nice through line, that having um, policy 21 Zero two one zero is really also uh, obsolete. So recommending that those two policies uh, go for the Okay. Someone might make motion to do that. Okay. Lisa? Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Thank you. And the next policy the only other policy kind of uh, put in the uh, zero series of our existing policy manual. And when we talk about the civility and communication and action, it would better be served in the 1000 series of community relations. So the only thing we're asking on this one is to move it from the 0000 series to the 1000 series, uh, which you could do also in one action if you choose. I think we have to take a vote on that. Let's take a vote on that. If you don't have to. With our new bylaw. Okay. Board policy, you can. You can. You're not required. Okay. Is it okay for both? You want to leave the visit? Okay, go ahead. That's the board for Board of Education approves and adopts the deletion of policy 0600, civility, respectful communications, and action by standards. Thank you. Is there a second? Okay, please stop. Any more discussion? Do all those in favor, please stick with all those saying aye. Uh, Anybody opposed? And this is Terry Um, And I guess respectfully, I may add that we do a motion labeling that policy to place it in the Thank number 1211 so that we don't one, lose this one. whole policy on. Sorry, but that's not articulated. Do you want me to amend my motion then that way? Okay. To, to make it into 1211. That's correct. Okay, is that okay to reconsider? We don't need a motion to reconsider. Do you want to reconsider? I'm just asking. Do you want to reconsider or action? We didn't do it as a discussion. We, we may want a motion to reconsider and then restate okay. it. I'm sorry for the confusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Greg, so did you make that motion? Make a motion to reconsider the prior motion to turn the policy to the Is there a second? I'll Okay. Is there any discussion on that one? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Motion carried in the way. Now. Now, yes. Yeah. So we're going to make policy 0600 to be now labeled policy number 1211. Is there a second? Second. Lisa? <laughs> okay, any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The motion carries in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, policy is uh, the non-discrimination policy. This is not legislative re required. This is a shipment improvement best practice. It mirrors the non-discrimination policies you will see later. Um, but uh, shipment improvement's thought is that uh, this and the community relations piece really embodies them. The Board of Ed won't do any actions that are of uh, discrimination. So this is a non-discrimination policy for the community at large. The um, regulation and then the uh, complaint form mirrors the other two policies you'll see tonight. But because this is not legislatively required, this one we would recommend for a second reading. Okay. Does that have anything? Is there any duplication? in this policy and any of our other policies is nowhere in all those policies where we, we don't say that we, we, so limit our not are you saying that all our other policies limit our non-discrimination 
to certify it as a faculty and our employees and whatnot. There's nothing dealing with how we interact with the community. Yeah. So, Greg, to that point, and that's why this is not legislatively required, um, the other policies would be sufficient in that broad perspective. Um, but what the thought was is that if it's in the, this series as well, then it's, it is duplicated in the community series as well as the personnel as well as the students, and so it's well found. Um, I'm obligated to follow the law. Wouldn't it be illegal to discriminate in our relations with the community, for example? If we, if we're not going to let you use our facilities because you're a Muslim. That would seem to violate the law. Why would we need a specific policy for that when we're obligated to follow the law in the first place? Uh, and to, to that point, I, I will agree with you that uh, is there a need? Um, there's not an absolute need. Is, is there a um, maybe a extra caution to have it in other series? Possibly, which is why um, if the board feels sufficient with uh, the non-discrimination in the student and in the personnel, which are required, then that does satisfy the law, and um, we wouldn't have to go on to this policy at all. I mean, we take, we take an oath of law. We, we swear to hold the Constitution of the state in the United States and basically just show their duties and whatnot. I, I don't see why we need this policy. And I am fine if the board considers that because, again, um, certainly uh, we, we recognize the oath of office and we know the efficacy uh, of the board. Um, I just presented it to the policy subcommittee and now the full board because it was a recommendation, but not a requirement at all. And so um, I would be fine either way on this one. Well, in, in terms of the, the board now, if we have a policy, and let's say that we do something that violates that policy, does that create any rights to other people who the policy is designed to protect? <laughs> question. I, I don't want to be glib about it, so I, I'm not sure I can give you a quick answer on that. But I know this came from the council that I recommended, but uh, it just seems to me that the community listening would just potentially create problems for ourselves down the road that someone might try to claim it even though know, they didn't. Sure. So they do some impossible theory that they didn't have to. So, um, we could either um, keep it as a first reading, we could table it, uh, which would be maybe the two actions I might recommend for tonight while I maybe get those answers. I don't think from the council. first reading, we could, we could all think about it, and we right. decide that we want it. And then at the next meeting, I will get that clarity from the legal council with the questions you pose, Greg, and you could determine at the next meeting that maybe it's not needed. That's why, want, like that's why I wanted to be clear. Uh, uh, yes, but I'm going to say, just basically, it gives us a month to ask shit and why uh, it's best practice. Mm. We can get right. clarity on that. Actually, if there's any, is there any, is there any, is there any precedent in the past where we did not have not maybe the correct right. verbiage, yeah. or were there other maybe examples where a school district did not have particular verbiage in place or verbiage in place. Districts, I have to find that out. Okay, I mean, I'm not, you don't have to, I'm just asking. Yeah. Great, great, correct. I mean, it is repetitious with some of our other colleagues. Exactly that. When I hear best practice, Lisa and Anne will probably have a sympathetic ear, but you know what that triggers. It's just horrible. <laughs> Talk about real estate. That was a week one. That's why I want to be okay. clear. That one's just for the first reading for now, and I will get some. Do we need a motion to table it, or no? No, the first okay. reading, okay. there's no harm. Okay. The next policy, also non-discrimination, um, is a required one, and uh, has really just been updated the uh, legal references, mm -hmm. and then we've done some slight cleanup to make things 
a little more grammatically correct um, because it's really just a legal notion and a very minor language cleanup to, to make it a little more grammatically correct. This could be done in the first reading mm -hmm. if the board desires. And I like that you just included the Title IX and how you can get in touch with you and it's correct. clean concise that you don't need to dig any further to find out where I can go or what I can do. So I like that that we've added yeah. that on there. Is it the board's pleasure to vote on this tonight or do you want oh, is that okay? Yeah. Everybody? Okay, well someone like please like please make the motion.
Can you please make the motion to adopt policy 5145.5a, uh, sexual discrimination and sexual harassment for students? Is there a second? Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? And motion carried to you. That's it. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Lisa. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you for coming today. Hope to see you tomorrow night. Yes, it was a star. Are you still trying to look I was just stopping to see if you walked out because I watched it. Hopefully, <laughs> outlook for the future of the thing. Putting healers out now, yes. Uh, I heard the uh, 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 so these are of the students, and they drew them, and then they made them into postcards for us. Look at that. Amy Snower. Amy Guerrero. Oh, Chloe. Chloe. Chloe did. Lisa can't read. This is so cool. I'm loving it. I'll say a few more things. What a great idea. Oh, it's so good. I don't know how much you do. I'm just giving out the phone. I mean, they don't give me that. Thank you, Chris. I would love to. How are you? And here you go. I'd like to stop the car down.